Thank you, Christine, and thank you for everyone for attending today. Uh, my name is Ryan Jones, and I am the marketing coordinator at Connecting Up. Um, I oversee the marketing for the TechSoup New Zealand program internally um, and run the newsletters and things. Um, I thought uh, most of you should be Microsoft qualified, so I'm going to concentrate quite heavily on the um, Microsoft donation program and what you can get out of that today. Uh, but if you have any questions on any other um, products or if you have any other IT problems that you'd like to ask about, uh, feel free to ask me and I'll be happy to answer any questions. So um, I'm going to start with a little bit of an overview of the TechSoup New Zealand program. Uh, it was established in New Zealand in 2008. Uh, it's a partnership between um, Connecting Up uh, Social Development Partners, which was formerly the New Zealand Federation of Voluntary Welfare Organisations, and TechSoup Global, which is a global non-profit that um, facilitates technology donations to um, non-profits all over the world. Uh, so we, we run the TechSoup New Zealand program and we run a very, very similar program in Australia called Donatech, um, and we're also involved now in an exciting new project called TechSoup Asia which will see um, the program rolled out to um, the Philippines, Thailand, Singapore and Malaysia. So, so far over the course of the program, we have facilitated over $22 million worth of Microsoft donations to New Zealand non-profits, which is very exciting. So, the Microsoft Dona Software Donation Program, I've, I've gathered some, some responses to questions from people who registered. Um, and some questions from people who, um, people just regular um, frequently asked questions. Uh, so one of the most common ones is what what can I actually order? I don't I don't understand what I can actually order. Well, um, through the donations program, uh, eligible organisations can order up to ten titles and up to fifty copies of each title. So for example, um, Microsoft Office is considered a title, so you can order up to 50 copies of Microsoft Office for your organisation. Um, the exceptions to this are server licences. Uh, you can order up to five server licences, um, and Windows 7 Get Genuine is a once-off order, but I'll go into that in a bit more detail later. Other than that, um, your 10 titles and 50 copies of each is in a two-year period. Um, so you can order uh, as often as you like, um, minimum of one title. And um, uh, when, when you've reached two years from your initial uh, donation, then your um, order limits are reset and you can order another 10 titles and 50 copies of each. So a typical example for a, uh, an organisation with 25 employees or volunteers, um, these, this is very basic, so um, 25 copies of Office Professional, uh, 25 copies of Windows 7 Professional, um, a copy of Windows, uh, Microsoft Small Business Server 2011, the, the standard and premium add-on bundle, and 25 Microsoft Small Business User Cow bundles. So I'll, I'll go through exactly what that is later, but um, that, that comes out at four titles, and you can see there that that organisation would be able to order another six titles, um, and they would also be able to order another 25 copies of Office if they grow, another 25 copies of Windows 7, another 25 of the, uh, the small business user cows. Um, you wouldn't usually expect them to need additional server licences though. Uh, so the licenses that you get through the Microsoft Software Donation Program are a little bit different to those that you get when you go to the shop. Um, they are volume licenses, and as a result, they need to be activated through the Volume Licence Service Centre. So you log on to the Volume Licence Service Centre. You, if you've never logged on before, you'll need to create a new username and password because it's not linked up with the TechSoup New Zealand website, so it's not the same login. Um, but this gives you a couple of great benefits. Uh, the, the most popular benefit is software assurance. 
So from two years from when you get that donation, you get all updates free. And they're not just basic um, servers, um, basic security updates and things like that that Microsoft always give you for free. If you ordered a copy of uh, Windows 7 today, Windows 8 is scheduled to come out later this year, you get a free upgrade to Windows 8 when that comes out. Uh, and that upgrade will be available for download through the Volume License Service Center. Uh, and that's, that's one of the other really good benefits of the Volume Licenses. It's quick and easy to download any software that you have a license for. So if you lose the disks, you can just go onto the website and you can download the software off there. Uh, one thing that people through the donation program are, um, really like to do is once, it, once they place their order, they usually get the email with the keys uh, for the Volume License Center quite quickly. Sometimes it can be only a matter of a couple of days. And um, they go onto the, they haven't necessarily received the disks yet. So they go onto the Volume License Center, they download the software, and they're up and running before their disks even arrive. Sometimes the disks can take an extra one to three weeks, really. So it, it gives you a lot more flexibility, really. So what, what can you do with all of this technology? We, we, we have 70 different products available through um, TechSoup New Zealand, just, just Microsoft products. So what can you do? Uh, one of the most popular ones that we have is allowing us to work remotely. Um, you know, if you're um, a case manager, a case worker, and you need to go out and visit clients, uh, it's it's useful to be able to uh, log into the network while you're out on site, and um, you can connect to the um, confidential patient records, and you can update records on the road, or you can access records on the road if you need to know something important. Um, it also lets you, obviously, your employees can work from home if they need to, or um, more flexible working arrangements, which are becoming more and more common. Um, customer relationship management is a really big one at the moment. We had a few questions about that on the registration form. Uh, CRM software uh, will allow you to track anything from um, patient records, client records, things like that. Or you can set it up to track um, donors and funders and keep contact with them and keep a relationship with them. Now staff can work more collaboratively. And this, this can be anything from a really high-tech uh, Microsoft SharePoint installation, which is a, a intranet solution which allows people to um, share files and um, work in real time together. Or it can be as simple as making sure that everyone's on the same version of software so that when you send a file to your colleague, you know that A, they're going to be able to open it, B, they're going to see the same thing as you, uh, that all the fonts are going to be available and that everything's just going to work. And sending and receiving emails is something that's really underrated and I'll be looking at a solution to do just that for your organisation a little bit later. I've also got the URL there for the case study section of the TechSoup New Zealand website. There are a couple of really, really great case studies up, up there from small organisations that have had big results. Um, and it'll give you an idea of what, what, you, what you might need for, um, for some, uh, some solutions like they've found. So some basics uh, before I go into specific programs. I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's really, really useful to get on the one version. We have so many calls from organisations that just go, oh, I can't stand it that everyone's on a different version and they don't talk to each other and we just, we just have difficulties all the time. Getting on the one version is one of the easiest things that you can do for your organisation and one of the best things you can do. Um, and of course, once, once you get all of those, everyone on the same version, you get the software assurance, so if a new update comes out, it's really easy to make sure that everyone updates the same version. Uh, a lot of people find 32-bit and 64-bit software a bit confusing. What, what do I actually need? Well, most computers built over the last three or four years uh, would be 64-bit compatible. 
Um, and the main difference is the amount of memory or amount of RAM that they can use on your computer. So 32-bit software uh, can only actually use a maximum of approximately three and a half gigabytes of memory on your computer. So if your computer has more than um, more than three and a half gigabytes of memory, and a lot of computers these days, brand new ones coming with four gigabytes or more, then you really need the 64-bit software to get the most out of that. Uh, I would recommend, especially if you've got new computers, I would always recommend the 64-bit version. And, and what is a client access license? Uh, it's commonly known as a COW. Uh, it's, it's basically a license that allows a client to access a server. Um, and that can be all kinds of different servers. There's a client access license to allow a, um, a client, whether that be a user or device, to access an exchange server for email, to access a SharePoint server, to access a small business server, um, and they're all specific to the server product. Uh, the main thing that we get asked though is, do I need a user cow or do I need a device cow? Um, there's no right or wrong answer there. They're all going to work regardless. Uh, and through the um, TechSoup New Zealand program, they're available at a very, very low um, administration fee. Uh, but the general rule is you need one user cow per user or one device cow per device. So if you have more devices than users, um, get user cows. If you have more users than devices, get device cows. Um, it's very much a, um, an economics question really, uh, and what's going to work out cheaper for your organisation. But if, if you say have a user who accesses a computer at work, and then accesses a computer at home, it may be more cost effective for that user to have a user cow, and it may be more cost effective on a shared computer to have a device cow. Uh, is there any questions on that so far? No problems. So some of the more popular products that we have, I just thought I'd go over some of the, the common questions that we get and um, invite you to ask any additional questions you might have. Um, Windows 7, it's been out for a few years now. Uh, we have a few different versions available through TechSoup New Zealand. Uh, there are Windows 7 upgrades, uh, which have been available for a long time. Uh, Windows 7 upgrades basically allow you to upgrade from a pre previous professional version of Windows. So um, Windows XP Professional, um, Windows Vista Business, and Windows Vista Ultimate. Um, you can uh, purchase a Windows 7 upgrade and uh, you can run the latest version of Windows 7 on your computer. Get genuine products are designed for organisations that are running different versions of Windows, uh, pirated versions of Windows, um, or illegal cracked copies, or um, mislicensed, so um, different operating systems and things like that. Uh, they're designed as a one-off uh, opportunity for your organisation to um, switch to legal software, which of course gives you the benefits of um, the software upgrades and things like that. The main difference here is that the upgrades come with software assurance, the Get Genuine products don't. The upgrades, um, the upgrades you can order um, as many as you like up to your limits. And Get Genuine is a once-off donation. That's not once per two years, that's once off, full stop. Uh, again, there's a 32-bit or a 64-bit version, so it's just down to the computers that you're running. Um, the new refurbished computers that we have available through TechSoup New Zealand uh, will all be able to use the 64-bit version. Uh, I think they should come pre-installed with Windows 7. Um, and of course, Windows 8 is coming. So if you order Windows 7, um, now, install Windows 7 on your computers now. Uh, when Windows 8 comes out, you'll be able to upgrade for free through the Volume License Service Center. We also have um, professional versions of Windows and we have enterprise versions of Windows. 
Um, nine times out of ten, an organisation can uh, will be fine with a professional version, um, unless you find an IT support person who suggests an enterprise version. Um, I had a look through the the feature sets, and there's not really anything significant in there that most organisations would need. So Microsoft Office 2010, um, people quite often ask what the difference is between the different versions and what version that they need. Um, the standard version comes with basic, what, basic requirements that most organisations would need. So uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Outlook for email, publisher for newsletters and um, documents, and OneNote is a is a really cool note taking, uh, note sharing tool. Uh, Professional Plus obviously comes with all of these six, um, but it has the additional benefit of the main benefit here is that it comes with Microsoft Access, which is a uh, Microsoft database tool. There's still a number of organisations out there that would be using Access databases. So if you're one of them, you definitely need the Professional Plus version for that. Um, if you order the standard version, uh, you can always order a copy of Access on its own, or you can order another version of Professional Plus later if you find you need it. Um, there are a couple of other tools in there that some organisations might use. Um, Office Communicator, which has now been updated to be called Microsoft Link, which is an internal instant messaging tool, kind of like the uh, like kind of like MSN Messenger. Uh, InfoPath, which is a document for uh, which is a program for project um, planning and filing the filing the documents, and SharePoint Workspace, which is designed for um, working with SharePoint in a bit more detail. Uh, both come with software assurance um, and both come as either 32 or 64 bit, there's only the one version available. Microsoft Small Business Server is without a doubt our most popular server solution um, because it's designed for, designed for smallish organisations, so organisations up to 75 users. And it's designed as a server in a box so that it provides everything that a nonprofit would need, um, uh, a typical nonprofit would need. So it's got um, email serving, uh, file sharing, printer sharing, um, SharePoint, so that you can develop your own intranet, um, and a, a few other things for different applications that you might want to host on your server, so that all employees can access them. Uh, there is the standard version. Uh, there's a standard version and a premium version. And as of Server 2011, if you need the premium version, you actually need to order both. So we now do a standard and premium add-on bundle because that only counts as one title in the Microsoft title restrictions. And we also do a user and device cow suite uh, for exactly the same reason. Counts as one title. Um, and it's important to note that server two, SBS Server 2011 is 64-bit uh, only. So you just need to make sure that your server can run 64-bit software before you order it. Um, so a bit of a feature comparison. The standard version includes all of the basic features of uh, Windows Server 2008 standard. So like I said, um, your file sharing, your print sharing, um, and some other things that uh, are important in setting up a, setting up a network. Um, Exchange for email, which is obviously some of you already be familiar with Exchange. Uh, you can share emails, uh, calendars, contacts and tasks. Uh, you get a copy of SharePoint Foundation 2010, which is a basic version of SharePoint that will allow your organisation to set up an intranet where you can share um, policies and files and anything else that you might need to share in an environment. Uh, and SQL Server 2008, which will give you a license that will allow you to run SharePoint and Exchange and, and everything that you need there. So mo for most organisations that would be fine and that would be enough. Um, but the premium add-on adds another copy of SQL Server 2008 
the small business version. Now the main thing that the small business version is going to give you is the ability to run a separate SQL server, which is useful if you have applications which are based on an SQL database. Um, and an example would be some CRM tools, um, Blackboard's eTapestry program, which some of you might be familiar with. Um, it would be useful to have another copy of SQL Server just to um, host that database. Um, you also get an additional Windows Server 2008 R2 license. And what that basically allows you to do is remote desktop services. So your users can, um, can log in remotely to the server and see their desktop and all of the server applications and access their files remotely. We actually find that's a really, really popular thing for nonprofits to do at the moment, um, and that's probably one of the easier ways to set it up. Now, we also have um, computers. A lot of you identified a lack of computers and a lack of hardware as an issue in the registration form. Um, we have discounted refurbished computers available through the program. Um, we have desktops, and as of Hopefully today, maybe tomorrow, we will have laptops backed up. Uh, the desktops, the new desktops, the new laptops are designed to run um, Windows 7. Uh, most of them will come pre-installed with Windows 7, and they're designed to be able to run all of the modern applications for you. Uh, there are no limits to how much you can order in the refurbished computers, unlike the um, unlike the Microsoft software. So you can just log on, log on to the website and have a look at that and um, see what you can find that would suit your organisation. Uh, if you go on just after the webinar and there aren't any laptops there yet, then please be patient and they'll be up shortly and I will email everyone when they are. So I've gone over some of the basic programs that a lot of nonprofits need and a lot of nonprofits use. So next steps would be SharePoint. So get a copy of SharePoint Foundation um, with Small Business Server, but a more expanded intranet, you might require um, one of the other versions of SharePoint, which allow more users and more features and things like that. Um, and Dynamic CRM is Microsoft's customer relationship management tool. Um, I think I was talking about it before in that you can track donors. And Microsoft actually do a free, uh, free plugin for Dynamics to convert it for nonprofits, so that you can track um, you can track your donors and you can track your funders and and things like that. It makes it makes it a lot easy, a lot easier to track your communications. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to track what um, which donors uh, which donors you're interacting with, um, and that's that's a good solution to look into. Um, that we'll look at doing another webinar on soon. So that kind of takes me to the end of uh, the end of the basics. Um, but if anyone has any questions on anything in particular or any particular issues that their organisation is facing, um, happy to answer any questions now. There's a question from Umesh about CRM. Um, obviously, you did refer it to um, being Microsoft Dynamics, but he has a question on whether it's possible to customize a CRM application based on needs. If you're able to yep. customize it, absolutely. There are a number of organisations, um, number of IT support organisations that can customize Dynamics for you. Um, what I'd probably recommend is. Um, Talk to a talk to a few IT vendors that specialise in Dynamics, and see what they can do for you. And it might also be worth looking at the non-profit version to see if that is uh, is closer to what you need, and then you can you can customise that from there. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? It can be about anything to do with technology. About it doesn't have it doesn't necessarily be about Microsoft. If you have a specific issue you have and you're looking for products or software that can address those issues, please um, feel free to type them in the question box and we will go through them. Um, here's another question from Mary Reed. Um, what is a good basic database program that is easy to use by people that are not good on computers? 
The, uh, the easiest solution is probably going to be Microsoft Access. You, know, you remember before I was talking about the um, difference between Office Standard and Office Professional. Um, Office Professional comes with uh, Microsoft Access and that also comes with some pretty easy to use uh, templates as well. Um, there will probably still be a bit of a learning curve. There will be with any database solution, um, but that's probably going to be your easiest bet. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do, though. You may find that it's easier to look at a, um, a pre-built CRM solution or um, a mailing tool or, or something else that's a bit more, bit more pre-built. Any other questions? All right, well, what I might do now is I might take the opportunity to um, just get out of here and go to the Text to New Zealand website. So I've logged into the website with my username and password. And you'll remember before that I was talking about the um, Microsoft um, allocations and what you can order and, and things like that. Now, it probably seems a bit confusing, um, but it's really easy to track now. Um, as of July last year, there's a new tool called the Microsoft Donation Center on the website, which can easily allow you to check how much you've ordered um, and how much you still can order in your two-year cycle. So I've logged in as myself, and I can just go over to the user menu, and I can go down to My Requests. I'll just click on that. And you'll see here I haven't actually ordered anything. Um, but if I go to my Microsoft Donation Center over on the right-hand side here, I click on that one. You see here that um, it says here my organization name, um, the current two-year Microsoft Donation Cycle. Now, I haven't requested any Microsoft software, so it tells me that this is going to begin when I have requested a donation. Um, if I'd already requested a, don a donation, it's going to tell me when my two-year cycle uh, renews and when I can order again. It gives me a quick overview of the rules that I was talking about before. So um, I can request donations from 10 of over 70 title groups, 50 licenses per title group, five server licenses, and no limit on how many requests I can make. So if I placed orders, this, this screen would tell me a lot more, but it shows me here what title groups I've used, and obviously none so far. Um, it shows me the retail value of the software that's been donated to my organization, um, and it shows me what I've actually received in this two-year cycle. So with these tools, it actually becomes a lot easier to um, track Track where you're at with your with your donations, and to find out what you can or can't order. Um, but of course, if you have any questions with trying to work out what you can and can't order, all you have to do is uh, is give us a call or send us an email, and we'll be happy to help you out with that. I have one question here from Umesh. Um, is there a way we can set up such webinar at the office? We have four branches. So what application and is it available on TechSoup? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, what we're using today for the webinar is a program called uh, Citrix GoToMeeting. And you'll see on the home page here, there's a big GoToMeeting box. Yes, we've actually received this copy of GoToMeeting as a donation from Citrix, who are a new donation partner. So if I click on Find Out More, you see that it tells me there about Citrix GoToMeeting. Um, it's a web conferencing tool. Uh, GoToMeeting allows you to hold online meetings with up to 15 participants. Now, obviously, if, if participants are sharing computers and things, then you can have more than 15. Um, but that's a good way. That's a good way to get started, and a good way to try web conferencing. Um, and we find it to be quite a quite a useful, robust, pretty pretty easy tool to use as well. Um, Umesh also um, asked again, what was the file sharing software that you said before? You can file share on any version of 
Windows, um, but I was talking about um, Small Business Server 2011. Um, Microsoft also do another version of Small Business Server called uh, Essentials, which is designed for only organisations with less than 25 users. No client access licences, there's no email hosting, but it does um, it does allow you to file share, print share, and set up a basic network in your organisation. Um, another question from Umar is this is um, basically, I think, referring to you and why are you using Chrome and not Internet Explorer? That's a very good question. Um, I actually have a, uh, a long history in video editing and the program that I use for video editing is a program called Final Cut, uh, which is made by Apple. And um, because it's made by Apple, they don't make a Windows version. So I can either use a Mac or I can stop using Final Cut. So because I like Final Cut, I use a Mac at the moment and I use plenty of, uh, plenty of Windows software, uh, plenty of Microsoft software. In fact, we do offer um, Microsoft Office for Mac through the donations program, um, which is what I'm using for this presentation actually, Microsoft PowerPoint for Mac. Um, there are a few other tools for Mac available through the, through the donations program, um, and of course Mac, uh, Macs can also dual boot Windows now. So um, there's a growing trend of people to buy um, MacBooks or MacBook Airs um, because they're quite nice, quite robust computers, and they can install Windows on them and integrate into their networks just fine. But yes, that that is a good question. Um, anyone else have any other questions? Um, as I mentioned, it can be about anything at all. About if you're not familiar with any of the TechSoup New Zealand products, um, feel free to ask us. Um, if you do after the session, after the webinar, if you start going onto the website and realize that you do have further questions, you can always um, email us back, and we'll uh, answer you as soon as best as, that, as we could. Is there anything else you want to add, Ryan? Um, we don't seem to have any other questions at this point. No, if we don't have any other questions, then um, just keep an eye on our newsletter for, for anything that's going on. Um, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to contact, contact us after the webinar and we'll be happy to go into uh, things in more detail with you. Um, and uh, you know, if we get enough questions on a particular topic in the future, we will probably run another webinar just to try and help people out and make sure that you are um, getting the most out of the donations program for your, your organisation.